Good day. I am AOB Olagunju. In this episode of Moment of Change, I'll be sharing with you on the subject of grace. Grace. What is grace? Grace is divine assistance in the race of life. Divine assistance, divine help, divine enablement in the journey of your life. No man can amount to anything in life without the grace of God. It is the grace of God that makes the difference in the life of a man. The grace of God is the defining factor in the journey of life. Paul made us to understand in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. He said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Paul, though a late comer, became a front runner by the grace of God. He said, although I labored more abundantly than they all, but that wasn't the reason for the results I have achieved, for the grace of God which was bestowed upon me, the grace of God which was with me. You can outrun others, you can outdo others, you can outsmart others, but without the grace of God, you cannot become fulfilled in life. It is unfortunate that today, many have lost focus of the grace of God upon their lives. They have placed their focus solely on their hustling. While there is nothing wrong with hustling, we must understand that our hustling is never enough to make us become whom God has destined us to become. You see, when the grace is not available, this grace is inevitable. That is why you see so many people hustling day and night, yet they have little or nothing to show for their hustling. Remember that it is written, A man can receive nothing except it be given from above. So even though we hustle day and night, with all our strength, with all our effort, with all that we have, Without the grace of God bestowed upon us from on high, we still have nothing to show for our hustling. Now, I'll try to explain to you various ways for you to understand whether you are struggling or you are living under grace. In Psalm 127, verse 1 and 2, the psalmist said, Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked one in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Very clear and straightforward. Many are experiencing sleepless nights these days because they have lost the grace of God upon their life. The scripture says God gives sleep to his beloved, his children, his sons and daughters. But we can't enjoy this rest without the grace of God. So one of the ways to understand that you are no longer working under grace but under struggle is sleeplessness. Many no longer have time to spend with God, not even their families. They are the first to wake up in the morning and they are the last to go to bed at night. That is not grace. Now, let me emphasize again, grace does not nullify the place of work. Place does not encourage slothfulness or laziness. However, 
grace gives you rest. While you labor, you also enjoy rest. Another scripture in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, the Bible says, The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. Although it is possible to also and become rich, but it is only the grace of God that blesses a man with riches without adding any sorrow. That is why you see many people, they also and they become rich. But at the end of the day, they begin to recount all their sufferings, all the terrible things they had to do, all the terrible things they had to go through before they became rich. Some cannot even enjoy their riches because of the pains that came with the riches. Also, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14, the writer said, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. What does this scripture mean? When God blesses a man, nothing can reduce the blessing of God in the life of a man. And you see, the grace of God increases the blessings of God upon your life. There is no amount of hustling that can satisfy a man in life. Because where your hustling stops, that is where your blessing, so to say, blessing in gold, that is where it stops. Because the more you hustle, the more you make. But when you stop hustling, your riches, your wealth, everything that you seem to have gathered begin to reduce. But when you also, with the understanding that it is the grace of God that blesses a man with peaceful riches, then you enjoy wealth without measure. You enjoy blessings that cannot be reduced. You enjoy blessings that cannot be cut short. Also in James chapter 1 verse 17, it is written, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Everything from God is good. Every gift from God is perfect. Anything that would destroy your relationship with God, your fellowship with God, anything that will come between you and your family is not from God. God is not an author of confusion. You can't be hustling and you don't have time for God. No time for morning devotion, no time for evening devotion. So, you need the grace of God. When you are walking under grace, even though we all have the same 24 hours in a day, you are able to spend good time with your maker. And you also have time for your families and loved ones. God does not give you one and take away the other. No, he multiplies his goodness and his blessings upon our lives. It is only the devil who gives you one and takes away the other. So don't be carried away. Don't be cajoled to think that I will also today and tomorrow I will reignite my fellowship with God and I will make up with my family. It doesn't work that way. Now, let me say this. Three categories of people in the world. The three categories of people in the world. The first category of people are those who also, day and night, they also with all that they have, yet they achieve nothing. The second category of people are those who also, day and night, with all that they have, at the long run, they were able to achieve whatsoever they set out to achieve. But they either don't live long to enjoy it or they don't even enjoy it at all while they are alive. The third category of people are those who hustle. 
under grace and enjoy the reward of their labor. Remember, God said in His Word that ye will not bring forth for trouble. That is what the scripture means. It takes the grace of God for you not to bring forth in trouble and for you not to labor in vain. Without the grace, many labor for others to enjoy. The labor of man is too weak to make him rich. Our sufficiency is not in our hustling. Our sufficiency is in the grace of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Also, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Plus also, minus God's grace, you are still insufficient. God is the all-sufficient God, and it takes Him to give you the all-sufficient grace. So without God in the race of your life, this grace is inevitable. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You may be weak, you may look not up to the task, but when you find grace in the sight of God, you accomplish that which seems impossible that which seems unimaginable in the sight of any man. You need the grace of God to enjoy sufficiency in life. You need the grace of God not only to achieve success in life, but to also become fulfilled at the end of your life. Finally, how do I access grace? How do I access grace? Number one is through prayers. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. A time will always come in the life of a man, however intelligent he is, however smart he is, however strong he is, that he will need help. But until he recognizes the place of grace, he may not run to God in prayers. And if he doesn't do that, he may continue in a struggling so you must understand that it takes prayers to access grace and grace can only be obtained on the throne of grace no man gives grace the grace of any man is limited it is only the grace of God that is sufficient number two how do I access grace by the word of God by the word second peter chapter 1 verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord you cannot have romance with the word of god and not be endued with grace remember the scripture says that jesus christ our lord and savior had the spirit of god which also comprises of the grace of god without measure why because he himself was the word of god so when you are full of the knowledge of his word you become full of his grace the more of his word you access the more of his grace you enjoy the word of god is graced and everyone who is in love with the word of god becomes graced so as you study his word daily you access more grace for your race in life Number three, how do I access grace in life? Through faith. Remember, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes, I know in this world of hard labor, in this world of hustling, it may be difficult for one to believe that there is something somewhere called grace when you can't even see it that is where faith comes in 
Remember the scripture says, we walk by faith and not by sight. You may not see grace, but its result is undeniable. So you need to believe God for his grace in everything that you do. You need to believe God to bestow his grace upon you. You need to believe God to walk in grace. It is one thing to ask God for grace. It is another thing to believe him for grace. How you also in life, how you manage your time, we show whether you believe God for grace or you believe in your own hustling. Remember the scripture says, so let him ask in faith. So if you are asking God for grace, ask him in faith. Number four, how do I access grace? Through humility. Humility. It is unfortunate we have today a proud generation and that is why many would rather continue to hustle than to humble themselves for the grace of God. James chapter 4 verse 6 says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth more grace unto the humble. If you are not humble, you cannot access the grace of God. Even though you pray for it, you believe for it, you cannot access it. God resists the proud. He only gives grace to the humble. So you have to humble yourself both in the sight of men and in the sight of, sight of God. Recognizing your weaknesses and recognizing the supremacy of God. Understanding that without God, you are incomplete. Without God, you are not sufficient. Without God, you can accomplish nothing. Plus you, your also minus his grace. You are nothing. So you must consistently humble yourself. Even as you labor more than others, you mustn't be tempted to believe that your result is in your labor. But you must consistently believe that your result is in the grace of God that he will make available unto you. It is my prayer that as you continue to also in life, your labor will not be in vain. From this day forward, you will enjoy the grace of God without measure. As you pray to him, he will release his grace unto you. As you study his word, his grace will be multiplied upon your life. As you believe him, because it is what we believe that will become. His grace will be evident in all areas of your life. As you humble yourself before him, he will give you more grace to achieve more results in life, to achieve more success, and to become fulfilled at the end of your life. Thank you for listening to this message. And I would like to encourage you that don't just listen to this message. Make sure you put to work the world that you have had. Because that is where the result is. God does not bless the hearer alone, but the doer of the world that they have had. And I also want to plead with you, if you know that this message has blessed you, please share with others. Share with your friends, share with your families, share with your loved ones, and let them also be partaker of the grace that comes with this world. And as you do that, you will not lack grace upon your life. In Jesus' name. Thank you. And until the next time when I shall be coming your way again, remain ever graced in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye for now. Top of the day to you, dear listeners. I welcome you to another insightful edition of Moment of Change with AOB or Lagunju. Today, I will be sharing with you on a topic, Mind Your Mind. Mind Your Mind. Everything in life is all about mindset. Every destiny rises and falls on the mindset of the man involved. It's in our minds that we set the limit of our destiny. Your mind is the mining site of your destiny. And what you mind determines what you mind. You cannot afford to be mindless about your life. 
about what you think, about what you say, and about what you do. All these determine what you get at the end of the day. They determine the results you achieve in your life. You are probably familiar with the statement people make when they seem not to be comfortable with the behavior or attitude of a fellow. They say, mind yourself. Because a mindless man is a senseless man. So, it's just a way of telling a man to get his mental order right that will ultimately help him to behave himself the right way. When a man disconnects himself from his mind, he exhibits behaviors that are naturally incongruent with acceptable moral standards. Now, one may ask how possible is it for a man to be disconnected from his mind? But let's not forget that there are times when we claim that someone is absent-minded. Although he's here with you, but his mind is not. It's disconnected and gone on errand somewhere else. So, one can be doing something without paying due mental diligence to it. One way to show that you care about your life is how much you mind your mind. That is why the writer said in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So, when you stop minding your mind, the world will stop minding you. But when you pay attention to your mind, the world will pay attention to you. Friends, I encourage you from today that you pay attention to your mind. Mind every step of your life and this will lead you to your destination in life. Once again, this is AOB or Lagoju. Until I come your way again, keep changing levels. Bye for now.